Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Shabbos Daf Peches. Right on top of the Omer, it says the Gemara, Toshma, we'll move our discussion regarding the Machlekes between Rabbi Yesi and the Rabbonon about the configuration of the calendar during the year of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. The Gemara told us that all agree that Christ will arrive at Har Sinai on Rish Chajish Sivan. All agree as well that the Torah was given on Shabbos. The question is merely, what day of the week did the Rish Chajish Sivan fall out on? According to Rabbi Yesi, Rish Chajish Sivan was on Sunday. And according to the Rabbanon, Rish Chajish Sivan was on Monday. Says the Gemara, Toshma, let's bring a raya from the following Bryce. The Sanya, Besedur Oilam. We learned that Bryce in Seder Oilam, this was a compilation of Bryce's, which was actually compiled by Rav Yaisi. So the Bryce says as follows Nisan, Shibayotsu, Yisrael Mitzrayim. So this month of Nisan, when Kleisro left Mitzrayim, Ba'ar Ba'asar, on the 14th day of Nisan, Shachtu Bischeim, they shechted the Karim Pesach, Ba'chamisha Asar, on the 15th day of that Nisan, Yotsu, they left Mitzrayim. Hayyim, on that day, the day, the 15th day of Nisan, which day of the week was it? Hayyim, that day, Erev Shabbos Hayyim, it was actually Erev Shabbos. So based on this, let's figure out the rest of the month. So if day number 15 falls that on Friday, apparently, day number 1 was Friday as well. So Rosh Nisan was on a Friday, 15 days later was again Friday. Now, once we know this, says the Gemara Umedurei the Nisan, once we know that Rish Chodesh Nisan fell out on Erev Shabbos, Rish Yarch the Iyar, Chad B'Shabbos. So once we know this fact, then we can figure out when Rish Chodesh Iyar fell out. Once again, Umed Rish Yarch the Nisan Erev Shabbos, since we know that Rish Chodesh Nisan was on Erev Shabbos, Rish Yarch the Iyar, Chad B'Shabbos, we can conclude that Rish Chodesh Iyar was on Sunday. Why? Because if Rosh Chodesh Nisan falls out on, on Friday, now how many days is, Rish, is Chodesh Nisan comprised of? So Chodesh Nisan is generally a Chodesh Mala, a full month of 30 days. So if it begins on Friday, when does it conclude? It concludes on Shabbos, 30 days later. And now, if Nisan finishes on, on Shabbos, so the next day, which is Rosh Chodesh Ir, is on Sunday. Now, Eir generally had 29 days. So if Eir begins on Sunday, so day number one is Sunday, so 29 days later is again a Sunday, right? Four weeks plus a day. So again, it's the same day. Now, if so, when was Rosh Chodesh Sivan? Sivan betray B'Shabba. Apparently, Rosh Chodesh Sivan was on Monday. Kashi Rabbi Yaisi. We have a Kashi on Rabbi Yaisi's opinion. He maintains that Rish Chodesh Sivan was actually on Sunday. Omelach Rav Yosi of Yosi will respond and say, Yohamani Rabbanani. This bright reflects the opinion of the Rabbanan, who indeed hold that Rish Chodesh Sivan fell out on a Monday. However, I maintain it was on a Sunday. So it seems that Rav Yosi, in his compilation, in his Seder Oilam, actually uh, included opinions which, were, which deferred with his opinion. So this bright reflects the sheet of the Rabbanan. Continues the Gemara Toshma, Rabbi Yaisi Yomer, B'Sheni Allah, on the second day of their arrival at Har Sinai, Moshe Rabbeinu went up, he ascended up on Har Sinai. So B'Sheni Allah, Moshe, on the second day he went up, V'Yorad, and he descended, he came down. So he went up, and he heard from Hashem, Hashem, the, the word that Hashem wanted to convey to Kal Yisrael, I would like you to be for me, Amam Leches Koyahanen V'Goy Kadosh, a special nation, a... Uh, the kingdom of Kayana of priests, and he took those words and relayed them to Kal Yisrael. So he went up and came back down and relayed those words to Kal Yisrael. Basheni Allah Moshe Biyorat. Bashlishi on the third day of their arrival at Har Sinai again he went up and came back down. Allah Biyorat. So he went up and he heard from Hashem the um, the tzivoy of Hagbala that uh, went to instruct Kal Yisrael to to uh, create that boundary to cordon off the Har Sinai. So you heard that, came back down, relayed that to Kal Yisrael. Bidalit, on the fourth day of their arrival at Har Sinai, Yorat, he came down, Veshuvalayola, and did not go back up again until the Kabbalah Satoira, when he went up with, with the others. Says the Gemara, Umi Achashalayola, if you're going to tell me on Wednesday, he, he didn't go up, 
he, he merely came down. Mehechan Yorad, where did he come down from if he didn't go up? Ella, rather as follows. Berevi, on the fourth day, all of Yorad. So he went up and came back down. Bechamishi, bought him his beach on the fifth day of their arrival. He built him his beach. Vikrival of Karban. He was Makrav on the Mizbech of Karban. Bashishi, on the sixth day of their arrival. Lohayu Loi Pinai, he didn't have time. He didn't have the opportunity to, uh, to go back up to Har Sinai. So I said, well, why not? My love, Mishim Torah, apparently because that day was, uh, was overtaken by Matan Torah. It was a time for Aser Sadibris. And uh, he couldn't go up himself. That was a time when uh, he went up with the other Har Sinai to be Makabal the Torah. So apparently, when was the Torah given to Kal Yisrael? On the sixth day of their arrival. This is a raya to the Shittas Rabbanon, who tell us that Yisrael arrived at Harsinai on Rish Chodesh, which was Monday, and the following Shabbos, the Torah was given, which is the sixth day of their arrival. However, according to Rabbi it was actually the seventh day of their arrival, because he maintains Rish Chodesh fell out on Sunday, and that was the day of their arrival, and only seven days later, on Shabbos, was the Torah given. Says Umar, no, that wasn't the reason why he didn't have uh, uh, time to go up to Harsinai because of the Torah, no, loy. Mishim Torah Shabbos, rather, because of a different reason, because of Torah Shabbos, he was preoccupied with preparations for Shabbos. So apparently even the man required preparation, as the Torah tells us, uh, went to um, cook it or break it and prepare it for Shabbos. So that's what he was busy with on, uh, on the sixth day of their arrival, which was Erev Shabbos. So once again, according to Rabbi Yaisi, there's no steer here, because he maintains that the Shabbos was, the uh, Torah was given on the seventh day of their arrival, and on the sixth day, he needed to prepare for Shabbos, and that was the reason why he couldn't go back to Har Sinai. Continues the Gemara, Dorash, Hauglila, this uh, fellow from the Golol, he was Dorash, he, he um, expounded, Alei the Rav Chizda, in front of Rav Chizda, as follows. He was extolling the virtues uh, of the Torah that Hashem gave us. He said, Brich Rachmana, Baruch Hashem, the Yohav, Urian, he granted, Urian is the Torah, Tlisoy, a triple Torah. It, it, it's comprised of three sections, Torah, Navi, Meksuvim, a triple Torah. Le'am so he granted it to a triple nation, which is uh, composed of Kayhanim, Levim, and Yisraelim. How did he give it to us? al Tlisoi, through Moshe Rabbeinu, who was a third. He was a third born to his mother. So he came after uh, Miriam and Aaron. So he was a third. B'yoyim Tlisoi, it was granted on the third day, which is the third day of Prisha. B'yachat Tlisoi, on the third month, Chaydesh Sivan. So whose shita does this reflect? Kiman ki Rabbanon. Apparently we found the shita is Rabbanon, who maintain that the Yimei Prisha, the days of separation, began only on Thursday. So there was Thursday and Friday, and then came Shabbos. The third day was the day of the Torah. However, contra to Rabbi there were three days actually prior to Matan Torah of Yimei Prisha. They began on Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and only on the fourth day, the day following those three made Prisha, was Matan Torah. So this uh, statement apparently reflects Rabban and Shita, that Torah was given on the third day from the uh, commencement of the Yimei Prisha. Now the Mephashim explained what's so unique about uh, three, triple, and how does it relate to specifically to Torah. So it explains as follows, that Torah represents number three, this third dimension, because we have Shemayim, heaven, we have Oretz, earth below. They represent two diametrically opposed entities. The Shemayim is the heavenly realm, the realm of spirituality. The Oretz, the, the earth below, is the, the physical environment. Those two things don't drive, don't, don't really relate to each other. They're the two opposites. However, through Torah mitzvahs, a Yid recreates this world. He brings down that Torah, that mitzvahs, and uses his physical abilities with his, within this physical environment. He used the materials of this world for the fulfillment of Torah mitzvahs. He makes a mishkan for Hashem, a beis hamidosh, v'shachanti v'seichem Hashem rests and dwells within us, within our physicality. So by doing so, he recreates this world. He, he uh, creates that new dimension. He fuses shomayim and earth, the spirituality with the physicality of this world. He creates a new dimension, a third dimension. He transforms, he elevates and transforms this world into a new creation, new identity, into a new entity. He brings the, the spirituality, the ruchnis of the Shemaim, embeds it, absorbs it within the earth below. Continues the Gemara. So Klai Yisrael 
were, were standing, they, they stood up underneath the mountain. What do you mean underneath the mountain? Weren't they standing around the mountain? Says the Gemara, Omar of Dimi, Barchama, Barchos. Melame, this teaches us, Shekof HaKadosh Baruch Hashem overturned the mountain. He, he had it hover above them. Kof HaKadosh Baruch Aleim as a harki gigas, like an overturned vat. So this uh, mountain was positioned above them and around them. They were within this overturned vat, this overturned mountain. But Omar Lame told them as follows, if you accept the Torah upon yourself, mutav, then good. But otherwise, right there will be your place of burial. Now, Toysus asked the Kasha, why was this necessary? They've already accepted the Torah upon themselves. They've already said Nasa and Ishma. Says Toysus, Hashem was concerned that perhaps when, they, when they're exposed to the frightful uh, uh, sights of Matan Torah, this Eishak Doila, where their neshama actually left their bodies. It was a very frightful experience. Perhaps they'll, they'll change their minds. Therefore, Hashem wanted to ensure that the commitment, their commitment was, was, was etched in stone, was absolute and, and unwavering. Therefore, He presented them the, with this ultimatum, be makabal Torah, right here now. And this was the, uh, this is the pshat, in Vaisyasu Besachte Sahar, underneath the actual mountain. Omar of Acha Bar Yaakov, Mikan, from here we see This actually generates a very, very strong grounds, a moido rabba, very strong grounds of, of notification of coercion with regard to the Torah. So moido is something which one would generally um, do before he's uh, if he's expect he's expecting to be uh, coerced into doing something under duress to uh, to, uh, to execute a transaction under duress. But inus, so he goes and he. Uh, and he makes that statement that my Rabba, I know that I'm about to do something against my will. It shouldn't have any uh, any legal carry any legal weight. So here too, Rachel Yaakov says, since the Kabbalah Satir was Bo'inus, was through this form of uh, of um, coercion. So this is this presents a uh, strong grounds for my door for notification that this was done Bo'inus. And they're not really responsible, as Rashi says, if uh, if they're summoned, Klaus was summoned to a din, why didn't you uh, fulfill your commitment? Why didn't you keep the Torah? Well, they could say, it was done by Inus. It wasn't done willingly. Continues the Gemara. Nevertheless, Omar Rafa, Afa became, nevertheless, Hodur ki blua b'mei They re-accepted it during the days of Achashverosh when Klaus was experienced that tremendous nace. And that generated a, a feeling of, of love and Ava to Hashem. And brought them to the point that they were makabal the Torah once again, may Ava out of love. The Chsiv, as it says in Megillus Esther, Kimu, the Kibla Yehudim. We learn Kimu, they, they established, they, they, they were Makayim. Masha Kibla Kfar, what they've already previously accepted. So this time they accepted it with Ava. It was no longer considered to be an acceptance, me Oynes, rather me Ava. I, I saw this from the Medrash Tanchuma, who, um, Gives another reason why the, the Hashem was was um, needed to be kai for the har kegigis. All that they already said nasa v'nishma. So the Medrash Tanchuma says that nasa v'nishma related to merely Torah shibichsa, which is in a way easier to learn Torah shalpeh, which requires much more exertion and tircha. And therefore, Hashem needed to do this uh, procedure to have them commit to the uh, difficult uh, learning experience, difficult and rewarding learning experience of Torah shalpeh as well. Okay, continues the Gemara. Amar Chizki. My what is the meaning of the Pasig? Mishamayim from heaven is din. You've uh, heard forth your your din, your Torah. Eretz, the Eretz, Yorah, uh, feared, Vishakata, and was calmed. Says the Gemara, what, what are these two things? Fear and calm, they don't really go hand in hand. Im Yorah, Lama Shakata. If it feared, why was it calm? If it was calmed, why was it in a state of fear? Ella rather betchila yara. So indeed, they didn't both take place at the same time. Initially, the earth experienced fear, but eventually, shakata it calmed down. Why? Vilama yara. Why was it afraid? My What is the meaning of the following pasuk? So when it comes to the first day of Abriya Sa'ilam, says, Vayer, Vayyakir, Yom Echad, then Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi. However, when it comes to the sixth day, the Torah uses a unique term, Yom Hashishi. Hey, Yisir Lamali, why this extra hey? 
As Rashi points out, whenever we have an hey, it, it is denoting, it implies something unique, something known, something special. So this Yom Hashishi is referencing some, some sixth day, which is, which is meant to be known and unique. Says the Gemara, indeed, the Torah here is, is hinting to a very special day number six. The day number six, which was the sixth day of Siva, when Klai Yisrael were presented with the Torah, Melamed Shehisna HaKadosh Baruch HaMas This teaches us that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who was Hisna, he set down a condition, he stipulated with the Mas Barashis, with the work of creation. So at the end of the Bria Israel on the sixth day, he said as follows, Vamalam, Im Yisrael Makav Torah, if eventually, during that sixth day of Sivan, the Kali Yisrael will accept the Torah, which is the, uh, which is the true objective and the goal of the entire creation to bring this whole world, this whole physical world, to its completion, to its uh, shleimos. So that's the purpose of the Bria, Bishvil HaTorah, Bishvil Yisrael. So indeed, if they are Makabal HaTorah, Ata Miskayim, you will have existence. Vim Lav, but otherwise, Ani Machsir Eschem, L'Soyvavayu. I restore you to absolute nothingness. So that's the pshat that Hashem said at the conclusion of the creation of the world. You should know that your whole entire existence is pending on the acceptance of the Torah by on that sixth day of Siva. Let's perhaps take a look at Rashi inside. Let's back up a bit to Rashi 20 lines from the top of the Amit. Rashi begins with the words Tachti Sahar. So they stood underneath the mountain Tacha Sahar Mamash, literally under the mountain. Gigis, so the mountain was, uh, was uh, hovering above them like a gigis, like a vatch, a matil mbashecher, where they process the, uh, where they place inside, they pour the, uh, the beer inside. Moido Rabba, so this uh, was generated grounds for this uh, notification. Shem Yazminim Ladin, Hashem summons them to a din. Why didn't you fill what you've accepted upon yourself? They have a response. That the Kabbalah was Be'oynas. Was a result of coercion. However, they accepted it. As a result of the, of the love generated in their hearts. As a result of the nace that was done for them. So Din, Hashem, was Mashmiya the Din, the Torah from Shemayim. And the Gemara tells us the earth, the earths, feared and then was calmed. Yorah, before, initially, before Nasav Nishma, Yorah, the Oretz was feared, feared, Kabloa, perhaps they won't be Makabal Torah, the world will be restored, will return to Sayyid Avayu, to absolute nothingness. And eventually, when they did accept the Torah, then at that point, the Oretz calmed down. Why does the Torah add the letter He? Beyoim gemar masperation on that last day of creation. Melamet sheisna tishas Hashem set down a stipulation. Hashishi with the word Hashishi mashma Hashishi am yuchet makemacher a special unique day known from elsewhere. Kedamina ba'alma hayorach hamiyomena. So the word He denotes something unique and special and known. Afkan here as well. Vayerev vayvoker shall gemar bereishis. So the last day of Bria Soilam Tolu Biyam Hashishi is dependent on the Yom Hashishi, that unique sixth day Vahu. It's referring to the Shishi uh, Benisan, Shinitna by Torah, Miri Badehe Dorish Benamiya. Continues the Gemara. Dorish of Simoy, Bishoshik Dimu Yisro. When Christ preceded, when they uh, uttered a very unique utterance, they committed themselves to Hashem in a very absolute manner. They were mocked him. Nasal Nishma, they said, we're going to do, even before we, we know what it's all about. We're committing ourselves absolutely to Hashem's mitzvahs. So at that point, when they were mocked him, they preceded the word Nasa, we're going to do. Lenishma, they did it before. They uttered that before they said Nishma, we're going to hear. This is a very unique commitment. So they were Zaycha to something very special. Bo Shishim Ribui, Shamalach Asharis. So 60 ribay, which is, ribay is 10,000, so 600,000 malachim, which correspond to the number of Kala Yisrael. There's a Gersi that says, Ulu kol echad ve'echad mi Yisrael. And to every one individual Kala Yisrael, kosher lo yishnei ksarim, they tied, they tied onto him two crowns. Echad kenegad nasa, one corresponding to the word nasa. 
Ve'echad k'neged nishma and one k'neged nishma. I want to show a beautiful pshat. Why specifically crowns? Because the crown is placed over on top of the head of a person, above his uh, his machshava, his intellectual ability. It represents something which is higher than one's intellectual capacity. Here too, this absolute commitment, this uh, unwavering, uh, so to speak, irrational commitment. I'm not it's an absolute commitment beyond intellect. It's something not uh, not comprehended or understood. It's an absolute unwavering commitment. We're going to do whatever you tell us to do. We want to connect to, to you on the highest form, on the highest level. So we're going to do nasa. It's absolute, regardless of what it entails. That's something which is beyond human intellect. That's higher than the person's mind. And indeed, there was echad to these ksarim, these crowns, which were tied to them above their heads. Continues the Gemara. The kibun shechato Yisro. So when Kali Yisrael sinned, they did the chata egel yardu. May of eser riba malachi chabala. So they lost the ksarim, 120 riba, 120 times 10,000 malachi chabala. Malachim of destruction came down, descended to Pirkum, and they unloaded those ksarim, they removed them from Kali Yisrael. Asked Taisis why was the, uh, the amount doubled when they came down to remove it, says Taisis, because of Mida Toiva Maruba. The, um, a good thing, it goes easier. It's, it's, uh, it's something which works quicker and easier, so to bring down those ksarim initially only required 60, 600,000 Malachim, each one was able to bring down two, two ksarim. However, when it came time to remove it, they needed to have one malach per crown. So the, mal- the malachim removed the crowns. Shanemar, as it says, as edyum. They were stripped of their edyum, of their uh, decoration of these, of these crowns, which they received from Harachayrev. Omar Abchamar Khanina. The Chayrev Tanu was actually by Chayrev Arsinai that they. Uh, they they loaded up they they uh, they were loaded up by these um, by these crowns the crowns were, were placed on them bechoyrev parku so at Har Sinai Tanu they uh, they put them on and also at that same location parku they unloaded the the crowns bechoyrev Tanu kadamaram they uh, they had them placed on their heads by Har Sinai as we just said that the uh, the Vaisyatsu uh, Israel as Ed Yom Harchayrev, it's referring to the uh, the crowns which they received by Harchayrev. Bechayrev Parku, how do you know that they that they were unloaded right there then at that same location? The Chesiv as it says, Vaisnatsu Beisrael, Beisrael was stripped of their Ed of these crowns. May Harchayrev, from Harchayrev and on, they were missing these crowns, meaning that it was removed at Har Sinai, and from there on, from Harchayrev and on, they did not have it any longer. Oh, Rabbi Yechon. The Kulan Zacha Moshe, the Notlan. Moshe ben was Zachi married to have these crowns transferred to him. The Samachle, because the Pasuk immediately following that Pasuk, which says by his Naslo that the uh, crowns were stripped, it says, Moshe Yikach Asoil. So we dash the Moshe Yikach, he took those crowns and he was Zacha to those, all those uh, Ksar, Omer, Shlakish, Oslakish, Borchal, Azir, and Lono. Hashem in the future will restore, will return those crowns to us. Shanemar Uvdu Yashem Yeshuvan, and the redeemed ones from Hashem will re- return. Uvod Sin Rina, they will return to Yishlaim Berina with, with happiness and joy. Besimchas Oylam Al Roisham. What does this mean? Simcha Shemay Oylam. This joy that was there from way back, Al Roisham. The simcha that was on their heads from way back that also will be restored, restored and returned to Kali Yisrael. It's referring to the crowns that were placed on their heads. Omar Belaz, Bisha Shaykhdim Yisrael Nasa Nishma. At the point in time when Kali Yisrael uttered those words Nasa Nishma, they preceded Nasa to Nishma. Yasa Sabaskal, a heavenly voice called out and said, V'amrlehen, Mi Gila Lebanai Raze, Who revealed to my children this secret? Shamalach Hashoris Mishnam Shemboy, that the Malach Hashoris Use they utilize this this the secret. This is their this is their uh, mode of operation. Nasa absolute commitment with no with no evil inclination whatsoever, without any other will, any other rotsan. Nothing competing to Ratzan Hashem. We're absolutely committed in any situation to do Hashem's Ratzan. Nasa we're going to do, and then just let us know what we're meant to do. This is something which resembles the uh, the uh, the operation of the Malachim. Tichsev, as it said regarding the malachim, Baruch Hashem Malachim. So the malachim will bench Hashem and give Bayer Koyach the 
strength of power. So they fulfill the word of Hashem. To hear the words of Hashem. To hear the, uh, the sound of His words. So the Pasuk here, uh, first lists doing, Malcham first fulfill, and then they hear. So Beresha, Oisei, first they're committed to doing. It's a, it's a her, it doesn't exist in a Malach. So he's absolutely committed to doing what's in Hashem. He has no other will. And then they hear, they get their instructions. So here as well, Nasim Nishma, that was expressed by Kalei Yisrael, expresses this utmost commitment to Hashem on the highest level. We want to do anything, anywhere, anytime. Just let us know what we're meant to do. So the Pasuk equates Kalei Yisrael, Kalei Yisrael is analogous to a, 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 a apple, an apple tree which grows What is the connection? Just as this apple period its fruit begins budding before prior to its leaves. Likewise, Kalisrol preceded Nasa doing, which is resembled with the with the fruit. So that came before Nishma, which is resembled by the by the leaves. And this is asked that we don't find that the uh, the apple tree behaves any differently than other trees. Tesla says, this tapoch is referring to actually to the esrig tree. So the esrig actually comes before its leaves because we know that the esrig lasts on the tree for a while, for a number of years. So although the first year the leaves come first, but then when the leaves fall off, at the end of the year the, the fruit is still there and it precedes the leaves which come during the following year. Okay, so this was represented of the, it's, it's indicative of the Nasa Benishma, which was a schus, that Kali Yisrael expressed their commitment to Hashem in this manner. Says the Gemara, there was this Stuki, the Chazi Rava. he noticed Rava the Kama'ayim Bishmaita. He was deeply immersed in his learning, the Yasva, it's Ba'asa, the Yadi, and the hands of his, of his um, the fingers of his hands were, it's Ba'asa, the fingers of his hand were sitting to say Kara underneath his foot. The Kama'ayit's Bu, and his foot was crushing them. The Kamab and it's and his fingers were, were running were were gushing blood. Amarle, so he wasn't impressed. He said, Ama Paziza, you hasty nation. The Kadmisu Pumaichu, Lud Naichu, you've preceded your mouth to your ears. You first said Nas and then you said, Okay, we're gonna hear. This is a, an act of hastiness. Akati, you're still in that mode. Bipaksu Saichu Kamisu, you're still in that hasty mode. Look what's going on. You're not paying attention to what you're doing. You're so engrossed in your learning. Beresha, so you weren't meant to say Nasr Nishma. First, you were meant to examine exactly what the uh, what it entails. Beresha, Mishma. You should have listened and uh, and heard from Hashem. Imatzisu, Kablisu. If you're uh, able to uh, to um, fulfill to be makav to accept the Torah, you meant to see what's involved before committing yourself unconditionally. Viloy, and. Um, if you can't be Makal, it's too difficult for you. Like Ablissi, you should not accept it. So you meant to uh, examine the content of the Torah before you were Makal the Torah. First you should hear, Imatsisu Kablisu, Viloy, like Kablisu. Omar Lay, Sir Ava wasn't impressed. He responded very sternly. He said, Anan, the Sagina Mishlemusa. We, Kalai Israel, who proceed with Shlemusa, absolute faith in Hashem. Out of love, we trust Hashem. We know He won't overburden us with something which we, we can't, uh, that we can't fulfill, that we can't um, live by. We are confident that Hashem will give us something which is perfectly suitable and appropriate for us. Therefore, we can afford to say, Nasa, before we even know what's entailed in the Torah. So us, that we proceed with Shleim Musa, Ksivan, regarding us, it says, Tumas Yisharim Tanachem, the absolute faith of Yisharim, or straight ones, Tanachem, leads them. Hanachem but these fellows, the Sagan by Lusa, that they proceed with, with perverseness. Ksivu, it says, Veselef, bite them, the perverseness of these uh, rebellers, Yishadim. It robs them and destroys them. So Rava responded very strongly, he said, Yes, we are, uh, we are proud of what, what we did. We are absolutely connected to Hashem. We love Hashem. We trust, we trust in Him. And we believe that if Hashem gives us something, we have the ability to fulfill it to be a kind of Torah. So in summary, we discussed that the Torah is a triple entity. We discussed the fact that Hashem, He uh, 
had the mountain hover above Kal Yisrael, and they were indeed the Mekabalat Be'ava in the days of Achashverosh. Hashem uh, uh, set forth a stipulation with the entire Bria, which was pending on the, on the Kabbalah Satayra. We learned about Nasav and Ishma, about the Ksarim and the, stu- the story with the Tztuki. Continues the Gemara, Omar Ashmo and Achmeni Omar Vyanesan. My Tzib, what is the meaning of the following pasuk again? Shir Shirim. Hashem tells Kal Yisrael, who is the, uh, described as a Kala here, Libav Tini Achosi Kala, you brought me close to you. Libav Tini Ba'achas Me'inaych, you brought me close to you with one, through one of your eyes. What do you mean one of your eyes? Betchila, initially, Ba'achas Me'inaych, it was only through one of your eyes. Lekeshetasi, However, when you actually fulfill the mitzvahs, you keep the Torah, be in Eich, as you got as, as though you brought me close to you with both your eyes. Explain the Marsha. Seeing the eye represents two realms. There's the, uh, there's the, uh, the eye and the mind. Seeing through the mind, intellectual vision. And then there's the actual physical eye which sees. So initially, but Chila, when Klai Yisrael accepted the Torah, Nasa Venishma, that was on an intellectual level. So that's, that's represented with Be'achas Me'inaych. That's symbolized with the concept of one eye, merely the intellectual eye, the mind's eye. But then, says the Gemara, Shatasi, when you actually fulfill, you actualize that commitment, you do the mitzvahs, you do the Torah, that is bringing it down to realization, actuality. That is resembled in the concept of Shte'inaych, both eyes, the eye of, of the real eye, the physical eye as well. So it brought me close to you. Amar Ula, Aluva Kala, a Kala who's who's shameless, Mezana Nus within the Chupa. This is regarding Klal Yisrael, who is regarded as a Kala, and um, they strayed, they turned to the eagle, at Har Sinai, which is considered to be the Makam, the Chupa. Amar of Mari, brother of Ashmo, brother of So Mari, the son of the daughter of Shmuel, said as follows: Micro. Where do we find this concept in the Pasuk? That Klai Yisrael strayed right there at the Chuppah, at the king was still at his uh, banquet, near the Nosan Reichai, so the near the, the, um, the uh, fragrant, fragrance, Nosan Reichai, has given away its Reach, has given it away to others. This is when Klai Yisrael strayed toward, to the eagle. Omar Rav. However, even in this Pasuk which describes Klai Yisrael straying and following that with the Zorah, the Pasuk doesn't speak in derogatory terms. It still presents it in a, an endearing fashion. Because it says, Nosan, The Pasuk says that Klai Yisrael gave away its fragrance. It gave away to others. It committed itself, so to speak, to others, to the eagle. It turned away from Hashem. But it doesn't use a derogatory term, his sriach became putrid, the smell turned into something foul smelling. So this is an expression of endearment from Hashem to Klaus for even when they did this Avir. Tonar Abban, we don't turn Aluvim ben and Ovim, those who, who allow themselves to get insulted and don't respond in kind. Shoimin Kharpasam, they hear their disgrace being uh, expressed. Ve'edam is and don't respond. Oisimi Ave, they do out of love of Hashem. Usmechem Yisur, and they're joyous, they're happy when Yisur come. They know Hashem knows best. Aleim of Oimer. On them, the Pasuk says, Ba'oyav of those who love Hashem. And they know everything is from Hashem. Even when a human being curses him, insults him, that is also coming from Hashem. Hashem is sending him. He's a shliach. He's not doing anything on his own. So these people, Ba'oyav of those love, people love Hashem, Kitzes Hashem and are described as the sun coming out in its full glory, its full strength. Omer my dechsev, what is the meaning of the following pasuk? Hashem yitan oimer hamevasrois tzavarov. Says the Gemara called dibur v'dibur. Every word she asked me hakbura that Hashem spoke nechlak l'shivim l'shenis split up the seventy languages and could, and w- related to all the seventy nations, seventy cultures of the world. That's the pshat Hashem yitan oimer. So his words were placed, were directed hamevasrois tzavarov. Which uh, called out Tzavarov, this uh, uh, many uh, a very large um, um, Tzava is is a uh, a group. So to many groupings, many uh, 
many nations were able to hear and understand the Torah. The Torah was, was expressed in all languages. Tzavar all the multitudes. Continues the Gemara. Tani ve The Pasuk says, and this is a, 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 a Pasuk which relates to the Torah, Uke fatish, Uke fatish sala. Just like a hammer, he smashes the rock. So how is this equated to the Torah? Ma just as this hammer, when it smashes the rock, it causes the rock to, to smash into slivers. Likewise, every word that came out of Hashem, was split into 70 languages. As Hashemus points out, all languages are really rooted in Lashon HaKodesh. And during Matan Torah, the spiritual source and root of all the languages and all the cultures of the world was revealed to be Megala, to highlight the fact that in its root, everything really is rooted in Kedusha and Torah and spirituality and Ruchnis is the true essence, the core essence of everything, of all existence. Everything is really leading in the same direction to bring the world to its completion. Omar of Hanan Bar Papa, what is the meaning of the following Pasuk? Shimu Kenegidim Adaber so this is referring to the Torah again. Lama nimshalu, the Torah can nugget. Why was the Torah here equated to a nugget, a, a prince? Loy mar lach to tell you as follows. Ma nugget said this uh, prince, this person of uh, high authority. Yesh be lohamis lachis. He has the ability to kill. Av the Torah yesh be lohamis lachis. The Torah have the ability to be mamus and to be mechaya. Haynu demarav. This is what Rav meant to say. Ones who grasp the Torah with their right hand, Rashi says, means they're fully immersed in Torah. They are learning Torah to pursue spirituality for the sake of connecting to Hashem. That is my meaning, but they're fully immersed in Torah. Some of the chaye, the Torah for them is is a sam, a, a a medicine, a drug, which increases life. However, those who engage in Torah, grasping it with merely their left hand, they use it for ulterior purposes. They're learning the Torah to further their own agenda. It's not real. It's not genuine. The Torah is a It can bring them. It brings them to spiritual death. Torah is like like a medicine. A medicine can enhance a person's health if taken properly, but it could also it could also ruin a person's health if he abuses the drug. Torah is that energy, that power. If one utilizes it properly, l'shem shemaim, to do the mitzvah, to learn for the sake of learning, that is a sam that increases his life. If one uses it for as a means to uh, to further his agenda, to uh, disprove his his friend, that's mas milamba. That's sam adamoisa. Davar ach another pshat. Torah is equated to negidim, negidim kol dibur v'dibur. Every word she yosef agash baruch that Hashem spoke, they, they tie to it, snake sarm, two crowns. As Rashi points out, the words during Matan Torah here, we're speaking about during Matan Torah, was, uh, was visible, it was, it was tangible. So they tie two sarm on each word, Masha explains. So they both represent the different realms of Torah. One crown represents the, the more revealed meaning of Torah, and the second crown re- represents the deeper level, the deeper meaning of Torah. Over Shem my dechsev tsroir hamer doy dili tsroir hamer is a bundle of fragrance doy dili is referring to Hashem ben shada yolen he will rest ben shada between my breasts all merkin is a soul from the kadosh baruch rubai nishalem afal pi although as a result of the cheta egel shem meitzer umeimerly he brings me tsai he brings me tsara umeimerly and he embitters me he brings me bitterness. So this was on account of the fact that they lost their ksarim as a result of the of the um, of the uh, eagle. So although that's taking place, he's punishing me. Even though he is bringing me misfortune or memory and bitterness to me, doidi ben shaday yolim. My uh, my doidi is referring to Hashem. Is is ben shaday yolim? He rests between my breasts. Rashi explains that right after the eagle. Hashem didn't uh, leave Klai Yisrael, so to speak. He right away instructed them to build the Mishkan, which was this grand opportunity to have the Shekhinah rest amongst Klai Yisrael. And the Shekhinah rested 
by the uh, by the Oran, between both poles of the Oran, which were configured in a way that they would uh, actually protrude uh, through the, um, they would push a bit through the Parochas. They wouldn't stick all the way through, but they would push a bit through and on the other side it would appear like two Shadayish, like the two Shaday and the two breasts of a woman. So the Shechina was being Shadayolin. So although Hashem is punishing me as a consequence of the Chata Egel, nevertheless, He rests he rests uh, on Klal Yisrael in the Mishkan. The Pasuk says, Eshko la koifer doidili bechar mein gedi. Says, well, what does this mean? Me, Eshko is, me, the one shakol shaloi, everything belongs to him, Hashem. Mechaperli, he tones me, tones for me, ala voin gedi, on the chait of the eagle. So gedi is actually a goat, but it's referred to a, a domestic animal, so it's representing the chait of the eagle. Shekaram tili, that I've heaped for myself. As Rashi brings, they, uh, they desired many gods. So this is an atonement for the Echet Egel. My mashma. Where do we find the Hai Karmi, Lishna, the Machnashu, that this um, word Karmi is a Lashna of heaping, of gathering. Omar Zutubid of Nachman, the Snag of the Mishnah. Kisei Shalkoiv is this uh, launderer's chair. Shakurmim Olaf, that they would heap on it, they would gather on it, Esa Kalim, the garments. Rashi says they had the fragrance burning underneath it, so the garments would absorb the smell. So charmi means to heap, to gather together, to pile up. So the Pasuk here is referring to the Chet Egel, which Hashem provides a kapara to Klal Yisrael. V'olam Shomon Levi, May dechsiv l'choyav ka'arugas haboisem. So Hashem's cheek was like this row of, of besamim, called diber v'diber, every word. She'osev g'nesh baruchu, that Hashem spoke by our Sinai, nismale kol o'ilom kuli besamim. The whole world filled up with some says the more, how can you say that it happened successively? The Kiva and the Shemadiba Rishon is smiling. Once the world entirely filled up as a result of the first Dibur, Dibur Shane Lechan Halach. Where did the second Dibur go to? There was no room anymore. Says the more Hoysakh Borhu Haruach Maitsraisov. Hashem took out a ruach from his treasure by Yamave Rishon Rishon, and he would remove the first installment of Absamim and he would remove it, take it away and substitute it with the second installment. Shanamar Sif Soisav Shishanim Noit Noit Fais Mar Over Hashem's lips are Shishanim like um like roses, Noit Fais Drib Mar Over this uh, fragrance over meaning removal. So it removed Hashem uh, arranged that it should be removed to allow for the second installment of uh, Basamim. Altri Kishanim El Shishanim so they would repeat themselves it would be an ongoing procedure. So by Harsina, every word Hashem uttered, as a result of that, Klaus was so frightened that the Shem left their body. Shemar, Nafshi, my Nefesh Yotza left, but Dabra when Hashem spoke. Says the same question. Once the Nisham left, on account of the first Dibur, Dibur Rishon, Yotza Nishmosan, Dibur Sheni, Heich Kiblu. How did they hear? How did they receive the second Dibur? They were already, they already gone. Says the Gemara, Hurid Tal? Hashem brought down Tal Du, Sha'asad, Lachis, we made him a special Dal, this, two, this, uh, this Tal, this Du, which Hashem is going to use to be a Machai Mason to reject the dead. Sha'asad, Lachis, we made him Behech Yo'isam, and he revived them. And therefore they were there and available for the second Dibur as well. Shanemar, as it says, Geshe Nudava is the reign of uh, graciousness, of generosity. Tana Falekim, you, uh, you, um, you, you, you brought, a, you brought, you spread above them. Tana Falekim, Hashem, you spread Nachalascha above your uh, inheritance. Kaisu of vanilla. So those who, for for those who are weakened, Ato Chenanta, you've established and set up. So you revive them and help them to continue experiencing Matantir. So um, the Rafashan point out that the first version of Shemar Levi is referring to those people who needed to, to get strength, to, um, they, they became weakened due to the, uh, to the overwhelming experience, this fright, this fear of Matan Torah. And that's why Kadesh Baruch was mighty that some that fragrance to strengthen them, to give them a chizuk. The second version here, that the Klai Yisrael, they lost their nefesh, that is another version of events. Some in Klai Yisrael had that experience. And for that, Hashem needed to use the towel to revive them. And finally, another version of Shemar Levi, of Shemar Levi, called Dibur Redibur. Shiyotim HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When every, any, every single word that came out 
from Hakadosh Baruch Hu's mouth during Matan Torah. You know what happened? Chazru Yisrael Acharim Yud Beis Mil Klai Yisrael was sent back, retracted twelve mil. So Rashi explains the Machna Yisrael, the encampment was uh, was this size. It was uh, it was twelve mil by twelve mil, and the ones who were right in, right in front of the camp, right by Arsinai, they jumped back all the way to the back of the Machna, the entire distance of Yudbeis Mil. So apparently it happened to, uh, to uh, others as well, but the, 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 the Gemara is referring to those in the front, that the most one would jump back is 12 mil, all the way to the back. So what happened as a result? They would take them and encourage them, slowly walk them, they would tire them to the front, like one does to a child. Instead of being yudoyden, they would tire them, they would walk them slowly back to their position. So once again, we have three versions of Shomer Levi, what took place, and the Farshim speak out. He's referring to different types of classes of Yidin, different madrigas, different spiritual levels. There were those who merely needed a little, uh, little uh, extra encouragement, chizaks with the psalmim. The ones that actually passed out and needed to be revived. The ones on a, uh, on a level which, which required them to jump back. So depending on their uh, situation, they responded in kind, and Hashem revived them by either... Uh, bringing out the psamim or the tal to revive them, or the malachim, to bring them back into position. When Moshe went up to Shemayim, Omer Malach HaShoros, the fact that he was born, so Malach HaShoros asked Hashem, Mal Yulud Isha Beneinu, what is this human being, a Yulud Isha, born by a woman, what's he doing between us? We're a spiritual uh, entities here. Omer Laham Le Kabbal Torah, but he came to accept the Torah. Amr lefanav? How could that be? Chamudo gnuza, this chamudo, this uh, dear gnuza, this uh, hidden thing, this uh, dear treasure. She gnuza that was hidden by you. Tisha meis v'shivim ba'arba deres for nine hundred and the seventy-four generations. Koydem shenir roilam. It's been around so long, hidden as a treasure. Atom of vakish litan of Now you're going to give it. Two a human being, a mere flesh and blood. What is a, a person worth that you should remember him? And a Ben Adam that you should recall him. Hashem Hashem our master. Your name is so, so great. Rather, place your glory up in heaven. That's where it belongs, not down on the earth. So the turns to Moshe and says, Respond to them. Amal of Fana, so Moshe says, I can't. Rubanishlam, Messiariani, I'm fearful. Shema Yisrafuni, perhaps they'll burn me up. Behevel shall appear with the breath of their mouths. Amal of Hashem told them, don't worry. Echoiz be kisek foidi, hold on to my throne. Ve chazor lem chuvam respond to them. Shenemar, as it says, Machaz pne chise parshes olav anonit. So he meant to hold on, Machaz pne kise, he meant to hold on to my chair of glory. And this will enable you to respond. Va'amar nachum malamei. This teaches us shepireish, shepireis shakai mezivsh chinasei Hashem spread from his zivash chinah. Va'anonai olav, and he made this uh, onam. He uh, made it like a cloud above him, and this protected him from the malachim. Okay, so Moshe Rabbeinu was prepared to respond now, but you need to know what the Torah was all about. Amal lefan of ribanish shaloyla. Torah shata nicely. This Torah that you're going to give me, Maxiva, what's what's uh, enclosed therein? Well, what does it involve? So he said, Anoicha Hashem lekecha, Asher etesicha, Meretz Yisrael. So Hashem responded with the first one of the Seres Adibris. Amalem. So using this ammunition, now that he knew what was in, what was uh, involved in the Torah, what the Torah contained, Amalem. So he turned to the Malachim. He says, This is not suitable for you. Le Mitzrayim, you're at them. Have you gone down to Mitzrayim? Have you uh, been enslaved to Paru? Why, why should the Torah be given to you? This is something which human beings experienced. This is something appropriate for us. Again, he asks Hashem, what else does it say in the Torah? You shouldn't uh, worship idols. So he turned to them and he said, Okay, if this is what's in the Torah, this doesn't pertain to you. Do you live amongst the Gentiles? Show you the Zorah? That you have this uh, inclination. Shuv Maksivah. Again, what does it say in there? So Hashem says, Zochah Shem Shabbos Lekachah. 
So using that, he turns to Malachim again, he says, Klomatam Oysa Malacha. Are you ones that, that are engaged in labor, Shatab Tzrichim Shvois, that you need Shvois, that you need rest on Shabbos? That's not something for you. Again, he has Hashem, Shuv Maksivba. What else does it say? Lo Yisisa, don't um, swear falsely. So he turns to the Malachim, Masum, Matum, Benecha, Ish Benechem, do you have a business transaction which can bring you to swear falsely? Shuv Maksivba, what else does it say? Kabe Yisavich Vesimecha. Klum, Ove Eim, Yesh Lachem, do you have a father and mother too to respect? Shuv Maksivba, what else does it say? Lo don't kill, Lo Yisinav, don't have Znus, Lo Yisinav, don't steal. Do you have jealousy amongst you? This evil inclination, do you have that? So once they heard that, they were stumped. They realized that the Torah, indeed, is a human experience, is meant for human experience. It's meant to, uh, to be applied down here in the Oil Mazah Gashmi. It doesn't, it doesn't pertain to Malach. They agreed to the Akwest. How great your name, Bechala Oretz. And they didn't, this time they didn't say, place your glory up in heaven, like Siva doesn't say. So they agreed that this Torah is meant for Klai Yisrael down there below, as we mentioned earlier, Torah is, is meant to recreate that word below, to use those, those physical tools to accomplish them, to elevate them, to transform them to an entity of Ruchnitz. Okay, so in summary we learned that, called Dibu Bredibu Shiyotzim Yagalish Baruchu, was split into 70 languages so all the nations can hear the Torah, the Sarasad Dibrais. We learned that two Ksarim were tied to every Dibur. We learned that the whole world filled up with Psamim on account of each Dibur. Then the Shamas of Israel left. The Israel reverted back, backwards to the back of the Machna as a result of this overwhelming experience of Matan Torah. And we concluded with the story that Moshe Rabbeinu debated with the Malachim. And in conclusion, they agreed to his approach that Torah indeed is suitable specifically for, for mortal beings, for people of Basar Vedam. Okay, a brief Chazara of uh, today's daf. We began with the discussion of Reisin Rabbanon, and we proceeded with the Torah, which is a, uh, a triple Torah. And uh, then we had the description of the Kofa Leim, Hakegigit Hashem, he... Uh, took the mountain and hovered it above Kal Yisrael. The Gemara told us that eventually, during the time of Hashverosh, they were makabal the Torah mi'ava, mi'ava sanets. Hashem stipulated a condition with the uh, Masa Bereshis. You must wait. Your pending, your existence depends on the Kabbalah Satorah, which is a true goal and purpose of the world. We learned that Kal Yisrael expressed a very lofty expression of Nasev and Ishma, which is akin to Malachim, who absolutely are committed to Ratzon Hashem. We learned that due to that, they received the Shnei Sarim. We had the story with the Tztuki, where Rabbi told them that out of love to Hashem, we're totally dependent on Him. We follow Him blindly. We know that whatever He gives us, whatever instructions He instructs us, are suitable and perfect based on our ability and our capacity. We learned about the about the uh, Chavivas that Hashem had even after Kali Yisrael did the eagle. And in fact, the Gemara tells us that immediately found the eagle. Hashem instructed them to build the Shechina so that he can rest amongst them. We learned about the, the words of HaKadosh Baruch the power that they had and we concluded with the story of Moshe Rabbeinu with the Malachim.